going. And let's get started. So you guys, I'm super excited to introduce you to Andy Cole. And I'm going to um, just let you know that I actually met him on Facebook. I saw an ad. I thought it looked really cool. I watched a couple of videos. I reached out and he actually responded to me. So thank you, Andy, for responding. And, um, you know, honestly, I just loved what he was talking about. He was talking about ISAs. And then I looked into his story and, you know, he started as an inside sales agent and ISA uh, in the real estate industry, crushed it, um, and then started his own company. And now I think has, what, 75 ISAs, Andy, that report to you in your company? Well, it fluctuates. Yeah. yeah. Between, so we've got between 70 and 75 right now. I would need to check. Yeah. So. Awesome. And so we're going to let you tell us a little bit about your company. Before we leave the call, we want to make sure that everybody has your information. I'll go ahead and post it on the live stream as well, because um, with all the agents in our group, they may not be watching live. They might watch tomorrow. They might watch a week or two, but we know that what you're doing is super valuable. And I've said this to agents now for the last probably six months, as we move into this new market, we are moving into a skills-based market. We have some amazing coaches and trainers on this call, Becky Colburn, John Dietz, who are pouring into our agents and teaching them the scripts, the tactics, the habits, the consistent efforts that they need to put forth. And you know, when you start in the business as an inside sales agent, you are starting, in my opinion, with just a phenomenal opportunity because most agents get into real estate and they've never been an ISA and they should be their own ISA if they don't have one, by the way, but they don't do the, they don't do it. And so I thought, gosh, this is amazing. So somebody might be looking at hiring an ISA. I think you'll be a great resource for them, but even if not, what you've learned over the years and how you're training your own ISAs and what you provide, I think is hugely valuable to real estate agents. So I'm very excited for you to talk to us today. So I'm going to let you take it away from here. And I'm sure we'll have some people ask questions if you're okay with that. So we'll monitor the chat for you and um, you guys can unmute yourself and, and uh, make this interactional as well. Absolutely. Uh, Carrie, super appreciate you having me here. We've never met in person. So this is a very like 21st century way of meeting. Um, like Carrie said, my name is Andy Cole. I'll be honest, I hate talking about myself, so we're just going to get into it. I, I, What you need to know about me, I love sales, I love marketing, I love real estate. So though that's what I want you guys to know about me. So with that being said, um, I'm going to actually share my screen. I don't have a presentation. I'm more of like a free flow kind of guy. Um, as far as, let's see, can I, yeah, I can share my screen. Okay. So um, what I would like to do is first kick off, you know, with the folks that we've got in here, um, I'm sure you guys have, you know, got a general idea as to what your 2023 goals are. I would like to just get a, you know, you, if you want to share them, great. If you don't want to share them, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. But what I would like to try to get a gauge of is like, you know, what are, what are some goals in here that we can, you know, use this as a starting point for the conversation today? You guys, anybody got anything? Feel free to, I don't know if you guys can unmute yourselves or if you want to do it through chat. Either way. Is they whatever. can unmute. So somebody, somebody speak up and share your goals. I know you guys. Are willing to do it. A anybody? I can, I can give you my goals. Let's do yes. it. What do you got? So personally, in production, I would like to do 40 deals in 2023. And I have a goal of adding 18 FLQAs. Is it okay, Carrie, to talk about that as well? Of course. This is agent and, attraction, um, Andy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Like, and I have a goal, a stretch goal, and a dream goal to have 53 people is my goal in my organization of EXP. And my stretch goal is to have 75 people in my organization with EXP. And my dream goal by December 31st of this 2023 year, I would have 100 people in my organization. Nice. Got it. Got it. So, so th this is an amazing starting point. So when it comes to these goals, every single one of these goals is a pipeline problem. Would you agree with yeah. that? For the yeah. most part, you, you got you to create your pipeline of, you got to create your sales pipeline. You got to cre cre uh, create your agent recruiting pipeline. Would you agree mm -hmm. with that? Yes. So, so the point that I want to make here is guys, like whatever your goals are, it doesn't matter what your goals are. You got to have a pipeline in place. Every single problem in business is a pipeline problem for the most part. I'm sure there's a couple outliers out there, but this is something I've been spending a lot of time thinking about, especially with the shift in the market. And would everybody agree? The market has shifted. Tougher market, tougher market to get deals closed in. Would everybody agree with that? Yes, yes. no, yes. yes. Okay. So, so let's, let's talk about some of the problems that we're having right now. 
what are you guys dealing with? Now I've got a, you know, I'm pretty deep in the trenches on this stuff. So I've got a pretty good idea, but I want to hear it from you guys. What are the problems that you guys are having with uh, right now? Anybody got anything? Understanding technology, um, using um, syncs to uh, not managing three databases, for example, or three CRMs. Okay, so get, getting consolidated a little bit, <clears throat> simplifying things. Okay, simplifying things. What about, what about specifically market-related problems? So things that you're talking about your clients with, like what are, what are some of the objections that you guys are facing uh, in the marketplace right now? Well, you know, guys, rates are high. Mm-hmm. Interest, In, rates. interest rates are too high. Rates are too high. Prices are too high. It's sort of the same thing. Price mm -hmm. is too high. So guys, when, when it comes to sales and, you know, I, a lot, I feel like most of the people in here I'm meeting for the first time, if you guys follow me on Facebook or you watching YouTube videos, anything I'm talking about, sales is about number one, solving problems and by solving problems, like for problems for a lot of people, like we see those in real life as objections. Yeah. So would everybody agree with that? So sales is about overcome. It's, it's about solving problems for people. And then by solving the problems where they're therefore able to overcome the objections. Right? right. So when it comes to the market that we are in right now, this is the number one objection in the marketplace right now. Everybody agree with that? Interest rates are too mm -hmm. high, prices are too high. I'm, I'm still hearing this. Like, yeah, prices have come down. Actually, in some markets, prices have come down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. In some case, I mean, in some of the markets that we're in, it's actually, I mean, when you actually run the numbers, it's actually, in some cases, it's cheaper to buy a house now than yeah. it is, than it was. Yeah, yeah. Carrie, Carrie where are you at? Uh, yeah, I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, but I have partners in 28 states, so I'm talking to them really quite frequently. So it's interesting because it isn't perception interesting. It's not always reality. Yeah, the perception yeah. is interest rates are too high and prices are too high, and it's going to cost me more money to own a home, which is not necessarily the truth. It's just what people think, right? So, so, so three months ago, they were actually correct, but in in, yeah. in a lot of cases, like this is this is a a, a wrong assumption right now but this is this is what we're hearing on a, on a regular basis right now yeah. that's the objection that we're hearing there so, was one other one in here which was low inventory sellers don't have or buyers don't have much to choose from and then the sellers don't know where they'll move that still is the case in some markets and candy um in minnesota shared that that is definitely an objection purchase so that you have that 100 percent. so so in sales the way to get paid and to get paid consistently. I was just on another training call about this. We were talking with an agent, you know, first year agent. Agents uh, do, do, did really well her first year, 17 deals on her own, which I think is amazing, like for her first year. Um, her concern was too much of this. Like she had, she had four deals fall out of contract till end of last year. So all that money that was, you know, she thought was coming into the bank account, not coming into the bank account anymore. Yeah. So, you know, she, she's trying to figure out like, how, how do I get it? You know, I, I can't figure out which way this needs to go, but up into the right, like steady, consistent growth guys, it's, it's all a pipeline problem. So where I'm going with this and, you know, the topic of today's conversation is I think the, the exact title is if, if you don't have an ISA, you are the ISA. Is that the title that we went with? <laughs> I okay. just, yeah, I, I became creative with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I like it. I like it. So like that, and, and that's, that's exactly it. Guys, if you don't have an ISA, you got to make the calls. You got to understand that it's a pipeline problem. And the only way to solve the pipeline problem is by getting on the phone. Would everybody agree with that? Yes. Cool. And who here, I can only see a few faces. I need to scroll up down through the, the, the image, the picture, the pro, uh, videos in front of me. Who here likes making phone calls? Anybody like making phone calls? Got a handful. John likes making phone calls. Big smile on his face. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so Angie's like, so, 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 so. Okay. So we got a, we got a, we got a, a full you know mix of people here so the the reality is and and i think uh byron you you were the one that had mentioned you're working on on sorting out your numbers for 2023 yeah is that, mm -hmm. is that you okay so you're, yeah. you're you're gonna love this presentation then today so so as far as what is the numbers game what is the game that we're playing here and i i like to personally think of it like a game because mm -hmm. games are fun jobs Jobs suck, right? <laughs> Would everybody agree with that? Like jobs suck. Games are fun. So this this is the game that we're playing. And the reality is, you know, 
when I, I so I, I've been in this space for nine years and I, I definitely don't know it all, but I know a lot more now than I did nine years ago. And, you know, up to this point, and I see a few people chatting in here. Let me make sure I'm not. Uh, all right, okay. So Candy's Candy mentioned goals. Okay. So 10 million, yep. 10 million in sales, 12 agents. Cool. Yep. So, so, you know, when, when I was, you know, cutting my teeth in the sales space, everybody's like, you know, oh, it's a numbers game. You know, you got to make your hundred calls to find the yes. Who here has heard that one before? Anybody? Got to, got to, got to find the yes. You got to, you know, you got to, so, so, you know, when people are saying like, you know, that's the numbers game that they're playing. I don't, you know, if you really dig deep, I don't think they truly understand what the numbers game is. Cause, cause even the way that they're phrasing it, you got to, you got to find the yes. Like it's, it's, it's incorrect. It's the incorrect way of looking at it. If you're thinking about it like that, you are setting yourself up for failure. Because finding the yes, very tough, very tough. And I'm going to walk you through exactly why. So let's say for the sake of this call today, uh, we're making 100 phone calls a day. Now, I'm not saying you need to make 100 phone calls. We're just going to keep it. We're going to do it uh, you know, for the sake of this conversation today I, because the math is nice and easy and, and honestly... I didn't do too well in math growing up, but I can do simple math. So we're going to keep the math nice and simple today. So 100 phone calls a day. And guys, we're in sales. This is just the, this is the piece of the puzzle where, you know, there's no way around. You got to make your phone calls. The only way to, the only way to play the game is you got to get in the game. Every, everybody with me? Yeah. So if, if you're not making your phone calls, guys, bo- get it on your calendar it can be 30 minutes a day. Block it off. Don't move it for anybody. It could be the president of the United States. Don't move it. Sorry, sorry, Joe. Like, sorry, Mr. Biden. Like, we're not doing that today. We're going to have to push it off for 30, 30 minutes because I'm getting my prospecting it. Cool. Okay. So 100 phone calls a day. Not moving for any, or in, and that time is not moving for anybody. So when you guys are making your calls, what are you finding is the general pickup rate when you're getting, when you're making your calls? Any, anybody got any, any ideas here? How, like how, how many phone calls do you need to make to get one pickup? Anybody know? Five. John says five. Okay. What, what else we got? What else we got? Any, we got any other Four. answers here? Four. Four. Okay, man. These are, okay. So those are some pretty amazing pickup <laughs> rates. I'm not sure I'm getting those pickup rates, but okay. So five, four, anybody else got anything? 10. 10. Okay. So 10, 10, who said, who said 10? Candace. 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 Okay. Candace says 10. I generally have found 10 to 15, every 10 to 15 calls, you're going to get one pickup. And that's mentally in my head when I'm making my phone calls and I still make phone calls. Yeah, I'm running a company, but I'm still making phone calls and I have it blocked off on my calendar. So I'm not just telling you guys, you know, Hey, do this. And then I'm off doing something else. It's, it's blocked off on my calendar and I don't move it for anybody. So for the sake of this conversation, we're going to say that, out of a hundred phone calls, we get 10 pickups. So, you know, again, but every, every 10 to 15, like keep that in your head when you're making phone calls, it's because, you know, I think what's really frustrating is, you know, you start making phone calls and, you know, if, if you haven't done this for a while, your, your head starts, you know, you're, you're, you're your own worst enemy, right? Your head starts kicking in. Oh, like, you know, nobody's picking up the phone. I'm getting hung up on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, pickups, that includes people picking up the phone saying, Hey, who's this? And then hanging up on you. That includes that. <laughs> so, so, so we're talking about positive and negative responses, 10 pickups. Yeah. So guys out of 10 pickups, what percentage of those people are going to tell you? No, not interested. Not right now. Now is not a good time. Anybody got any insight on this? 80%. Nine. Nine. 80%. Somebody said nine. Who said nine? John? Hey. Me. Hey. Uh, sorry, I can't. Scott. Uh, Scott. Scott. Okay, Scott Scott says nine. Out of 10, he says nine are going to say no. That is the number that I have generally found to be true. So nine, uh, 90, per, or we'll say nine pickups, nine people not interested. So guys, if nine people are going to be not interested out of 10 pickups, then this is the game that we're playing. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that everybody can see what we got going on here. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a little too big. Let's do, let's do 50, 50 instead. All right. So guys, this is the game that we're playing. So we've got no, I'll put that in red. We've got maybe, 
put that in yellow. And then we've got yes, I'll put this in green. So this is the game that we're playing right here, right? Uh, except the reality is like, that's not the game that we're playing. Guys, nine people told us not interested. Nine, nine no's. Looking at this, this is the game that we've been either taught or this is the game that we have, we've been playing this whole time. The reality is this is the game that we're actually playing. So we'll put this to 90. We'll put this to nine because you're going to get 9% maybe. And then 1% is going to be yes. Interesting. Do you guys see the problem here? <laughs> I can't even see the yes. It disappeared. Yeah. So so it's, so somebody somebody on a call the other day they said it's like I, I can't see the yes. It's a speck of dust on my screen, right? So so, but you you guys see the problem here. So coming back to what I was saying about like you know yeah you just got to find the yes. Yeah. Guys, that game is impossible. If you're looking for the yes, you're gonna fail. 100% guaranteed going to fail. And, and, I, and the numbers back it up, by the way. What's the percentage of real estate agents first year that fail in their first year? Anybody know? 50%. 72% according to... <laughs> John's got the actual stats. John, John's got the stats. It's, it's high. So I, 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 I actually had read somewhere it's 80%, but 72% is, is in the ballpark. So guys, the reason why the failure rate is so high is because nobody is they think they're playing they think they're playing this game when in reality they're playing this game is this making sense clicking yes okay so now we know what game we're playing that's helpful we know the rules of the game now we're going to talk about how to play the game properly so that we're setting ourselves up for success from day one Okay. So the reality is like, guys, when we're calling these people, no, not interested, uh, you know, not right now, let's talk. So we were talking about, uh, what the most common objections in the marketplace are, which is what, which are, which are what interest rates too high prices are too high. Right. So, so guys, when, when you get somebody on the phone, and let's, let's talk about, let's just start from the very top. These lead, I, I think for the most part, we're all working with internet leads here for the most part. Is, is that accurate assessment? Yes, no? <laughs> no, I would say that a lot of people do get internet leads. Yes. And that's a portion of their business. The other portion might be just people that they're kind of acquainted with in their community or social media. They're trying to get into more conversations and relationships and then referrals and sphere of influence. Um, which is why some of the answers to your question were a little bit higher because if we already know somebody, we probably have higher pickup rates. Now okay. we don't necessarily have higher yeses because it's all about timing. We don't know when people are going to look to move or buy or sell or invest in real estate. Right. So oftentimes, even with our sphere, we still get no's not, no, I don't want to talk to you, but no, I'm not looking to do anything. No, I don't know anybody. So we still have to be prepared for those conversations. But so that just to give you an idea, we've got people that do all of those things on a regular for, basis. For, for sure. So, so let's, let's talk specifically about people that have either reached out to us through, you know, internet, internet portals or something, something like that, social or, media. Or, or social media. So people that there's been some sort of inbound inquiry. Okay. Okay. Maybe you guys sign calls. I know some of you are getting signed calls. You're getting leads from your KV core, your listing boosts, that sort of thing. Okay. Per perfect. Exactly right. So guys, question out there for everybody. Has anybody here in their entire experience of living accidentally submitted their contact info to anything online on a sign accidentally called anybody? Has anybody ever done that? <laughs> anybody? Yes. You guys see where I'm going with this? Okay. So, so I'm, I'm operating from the premise that nobody does that because I've never done it. And I don't know of anybody that's ever done that before. So when, when we're calling these people, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, like, okay, you had some reason for reaching out at some point about something right now. Uh, what I'm going to pull up here is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Everybody familiar with this? So let me see if I can pull up this exact image here. 
All right, well, let me just blow this up a little bit. So guys, it, at the bottom here, you guys see this? Air, air, water, food, shelter, shelter, homes, real estate, right? So, so guys, like th this is, this is at the bottom of the pyramid. This is like, we're, we're in the, we're not in the, like, I, like I want business. We're selling the, I need to people that need this stuff. Making sense. Mm -hmm. So, so while, while we're talking about inbound leads today, just to be clear, I could, if I wanted to just pick out a phone book and just start calling people. And I know they all need homes. You guys, are, are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So, so we're, in, we're in the needs business. We're selling homes. We're selling real estate. If these people tell us off of an inbound inquiry, let's say we get somebody on the phone. Let's say his name is John. Hey, John, this is Andy with the XP. Uh, is, uh, let's, I'll give, I'll give you the exact script that I use. So let's say John picks up the phone. Hello? Hey, hi, is this John? Yeah, this is John. Hey, John, this is Andy with EXP Realty here in Austin. Hey, question for you. You had reached out to us a little while back about purchasing a home. You still in the market for something here in the next six months or so. That's it right there. So that's the script. You know, not, not really. No, we're not interested. Uh, it, we're, it, it's not a good time. Yeah, we're not, we're not interested. Okay, got it. Is there anything holding you back at the moment? Do you see what just happened there? We got, we got, we got our no. We got our no. I'm, I'm the, the difference between how I'm going about my prospecting and how a lot of other folks are going about their prospecting, prospecting is I'm looking for the no. Everybody else is looking for the yes. I'm looking for the no. And I know the no is coming. So, which is why I don't even need to think twice about what my response is going to be. Okay, God, I totally understand. Is there anything holding you back, may I ask? Objection handling. If you have to even remotely think about what your response is going to be to the no, you're out of, you're, you're lost the game, lost the game with me. Yes. So is there anything holding you back? No, we're just, we're really just not interested. Okay. Got it. I mean, you're thinking next year, maybe second objection. So I'm asking, like, I'm, I'm, I'm asking my question a different way now. Are you thinking next year? Maybe. Well, all right, look, so the kids, you know, they're going to be moving out of the house come springtime. We're thinking about downsizing. We're, I'm not sure if we're going to do it. The interest rates are too high. Prices are too high right now. And I think we're just going to hold off, you know, and we'll, we'll reevaluate in six months. Okay. Got it. Because I hate, I, I was searching for the no, I know the why now you got, you guys, you guys see how the game, how the game is changing. So, so initially this person told me, you know, no, not interested. So in my head, I'm putting this guy at a two out of 10 motivation right now. But because I'm searching for the no, okay. And I, and I, in my head, I know like nobody submits their contact information online by accident. Cause I know that, right. It's just truth. This guy, I, I start, I start digging deeper. I'm going one level, two level, three levels deep, four levels deep. And I get the why, I get the why. So like the piece of info that you have to have to play this game, why? I'm going to put this in blue because it's super important. Guys, when, when, if you don't have the why, you're screwed. You're not going to be able to sell anything to anybody. If you have the why, believe it or not, there's a level to this game where you can sell anything to anybody. Making sense? Yeah. So, so and, and, you're, and you're not, it's not even selling. It's, helping somebody do something that they already wanted to do in the first place. Like sales, ooh, slimy, like Wolf of Wall Street. Anybody see Wolf of Wall Street? Like that doesn't work. That doesn't work today. But if I'm just calling and I know that they had a need or a desire, I just have to find out what that desire was and then help them solve it. Sales, problem solving, right? Is this making sense? Yeah. So because I've found out the, like, so I, First objection, didn't give me any time day. Second objection, didn't give me any time day. Third objection, found out, okay, springtime, they're going to be downsizing. Now we're talking two transactions, right? And now, guys, where are we at motivation level for these people? We just took a, we just took a no, and where are we at motivation level for these people now? Anybody got any ideas? Yes, no. 
Well, Andy, if you're talking springtime as in relevant to this conversation, it's January, right? We don't have spring in Florida, by the way. It's just hot all year long. So uh, I don't, I think I'm having a hard time figuring out when it's spring. Uh, so let's just say three months from now, if three months from now, you're going to be looking to buy a new home, I'm going to put you at a seven. So that's exactly right. So, so that, do you, do you guys see what just happened here? We've just taken a no and we flipped it to maybe, and there, we're on the path to flipping this to a yes. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys see how power, like, do you guys see where this is going? Right. So, so. Yeah. If you started out believing that everybody eventually is a 10, then you'll follow up with people until they become a 10. And that boy, you couldn't have said it any better than that. So, so this, so this, this is the game that we think that we're playing. This is the game that we're actually playing. This is the game that we're playing now that we know that this is the game that we're playing. And now this is the game that we're actually playing. Oh, I miss, I missed it there. This is the game that we're actually playing. You guys see this? Making sense? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so if, if all of these answers are green go, it's like, it's like a green stop sign, drive, <laughs> drive right through it. Well, it's like, it's like how I started asking myself the question, like, how do, like, how, is, how do we lose the game? You guys see where I'm going with this? So let's let's talk about the real numbers game now. So let's go down a little bit more here. So let's go back to our 100 phone calls per day example, right? So 100 phone calls a day, 10 contacts per day, which, be, you know, how, how I like to, to teach this to both Asians, ISAs, everybody, is you're, you're you know, I never want to have somebody feel forced like they have to do anything with me. If you're, if you're trying to force somebody to do something, you know, it just, it, it's just, I don't know. I I've, 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 I've been a very, you know, when you're ready, let me know. I I'm, I'm ready when you're ready. Like that's, that's how I like to roll. Some people might be a little bit more aggressive than that. It's, it's honestly, it's however you want to do it. The way, the way that I like to think about this, those 10 contacts, 10 seeds planted, Right. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about 10 seeds planted and we're talking about this on a daily basis, right? So 10 seeds, uh, 10 seeds planted per day, daily, that's 50 seeds planted weekly. And we'll say just to make the math easy, uh, 20, uh, or excuse me, 200 seeds monthly. And then we'll say 2,400 seeds annually. So guys, what, what would you say is, you know, out of, out of 2,400 seeds planted, what, what would you say is a reasonable, realistic closing rate on 2,400 seeds planted annually? Anybody got an idea here? It depends. It, it does, it does depend. It does depend. We'll, we'll come, we'll, we'll, we'll break this down a couple different ways. So, I mean, I mean, honestly, if, if you're really rocking and you get a, you know, 5% closing rate on 2,400, uh, seeds planted guys, five, close it, uh, close at 5%. That's 120 deals per year. You guys, you can make 2,400 phone calls to neighbors to people in your database, to people on your social media, to a phone book, to a neighborhood farm, because how would 120 transactions change your life? I mean, that's what you really have to understand is when you're doing this, this is really have faith in the outcome that this could be a reality, because while you're doing it every day, it's monotonous and you're getting a lot of rejection, but what you're not seeing and focusing on is the end number that will come if you can overcome the day-to-day -day boredom, monotony, and rejection. And so you just have to have a way in which you push through those daily activities to know and have faith. Like we always talk about exercise your faith muscle, that if you do that consistently, that your outcome can be this. Even if it was half of that, you guys, even if you aren't that great at conversion and you're saying, I haven't really done this, I'm rusty, I'm new, 
okay, what if it was half of that or 1%? What if it's one fifth of that? It's still two transactions a year or a month for the year. Carrie, is, is, can is, I, yeah, Andy, yeah, you mind ahead. if I add something? Yeah, yeah, go, go absolutely, go for it. All right. So it depends if we're if we're talking internet leads, it's one to two percent um, nationally on average. If you're talking to your database, six to seven percent of your database is going to move every twelve months, and they all know somebody who's going to move. So that's all potential referrals. And the lowest hanging fruit, especially right now, is calling expireds and meeting with expired listings. You meet with them and you can and you follow up consistently, 20% will turn into listings. Yeah. Yeah, so so a, a couple of things there that I wanna touch on real quick. So that the national average for internet leads is closing at 1%. Guys, with all due respect, I'm not interested in playing at the national average. Like, th like this, the reason why I'm sharing this is so you can be top 1%. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the reason why internet leads convert at 1% is because this is the game that they're playing. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so like that, like if, if, if you think that you're playing this game, but you're actually playing this game, this is why internet leads convert at 1%. It's less, it's actually less than 1%. It's actually probably closer to like 0.05%. Uh, wait, did I get that right? You got it's like ha half of a percent. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say. But the, the the point is though, when you truly understand, coming back to what I was saying about, you know, the numbers game. What is the numbers game, guys? This is the numbers game. This is the numbers game at a very high level. And so let's let's go a little bit deeper on this now. Let's talk about like how how we actually get to 120. Uh, you know, between 24 and 120 deals closed. Which, by the way, coming back to what the goals were here, uh, we had 40 deals, right? So 40 deals, to get 40 deals, I think, you know, give or take, we're closing at 2%, 2% of the numbers that we just walked, walked through here, right? So, you know, when, when, you're, when you're coming up with goals, you got, you got to have a, like, goals are great, but you got to know where you're going to go to actually arrive at that goal. This is the roadmap, right? So, so let's, let's talk about how we actually get, you know, to some of these numbers here. So Zillow's got a statistic and Zillow's playing this game at a much bigger level than I'll ever be playing it at. Um, is they, is anybody know which statistic I'm talking about? So agent that gets face-to-face -face first with their lead, wins the business. What percentage of the time? Does anybody know what, what this number is? 90. All right. We got 90. Anybody else got anything? It's seventy-two first wins business eighty percent of the time. That's the number. I might be off by one or two digits there, but you guys, you guys get the point. So, guys, if if I know that all I have to do is get face to face first with my business, uh, with my potential leads, and I'm going to get the business eighty percent of the time. I mean, guys, like you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to Vegas for a vacation. You are Vegas. You're the house and you own Vegas, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so guys, th this is the real numbers game. And so if, if you truly understand this at a very high level, you get your prospecting on your calendar, you're doing this every day, guys, I'm, I mean, training sessions all day with agents that are saying, you know, Hey, you know, it's, it's a really tough market. And I, I think that, you know, I, I might have to go get a real job. Hmm. You guys, you guys hearing these conversations a little bit and, and let's be real. It's, it's a real conversation. Like, let's be real. It's a real conversation that people are having right now, guys. What, what, what happens? Let me back up. The, the, the people that, go and take these quote unquote normal jobs. Guys, what, what happens to the people that take these normal jobs that are not producing revenue to the bottom line? Who gets cut first? You guys see where I'm going with this? So, so like, like the job security, what I'm really saying here is the job security, it's, in, it's not in going and getting a real job. The job security is in sales. 
there's no job security over here. The job security is in sales. And the, and the reason why the job security is, is here is because of everything that we've talked about today. Is this making sense? Yes. So, so my, what I, what I want to leave you guys with today is guys like you can't, you can't expect to play the game and not be putting yourself in the game. Like you got to be making the calls and understand that no, you're going to hear that 90% of the time. So you got to be okay with getting told no and having people get pissed at you. I had somebody get pissed at me on a call earlier this morning. She was really pissed. She's like, you know, drop, dropping all sorts of language that I'm not going to share here, but you guys won't stop calling, texting me. Like it's so, you know, so effing annoying. Right. And, and guys, like the reality is like this, like that, I'm cool with that. I got my no. And I can tell that she's having a bad day. So I'm going to catch her on a good day. I'm going to keep sending her listings to take a look at, and eventually she'll warm up and she'll come around. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, short, short and sweet on the presentation today. I, I hope, uh, I, I don't know. I, do you guys have any questions about anything? Do you guys, let's, uh, um, let's do some, if you don't mind, cause we have a little bit of time. You train 70, 75 ISAs. You did it for two years. You have great conversion. You're calling leads. You're, you you know, you're playing the, the right game. You've got the right mindset for agents who, um, are, two questions. The first one is who agents who are, don't have an ISA, they are their own ISA and they should be, they should be um, <laughs> playing that role more often than they are, especially in the year to come. Um, what are your top tips, scripts, my, anything that you would teach an ISA that's coming in that their, that, that their job depends on them picking up the phone every day, doing these calls and, and setting these appointments. What would be a couple of things that you would share? So, so let, let's talk, let's talk, uh, John mentioned uh, expired listings. John, you call on expired listings right now? A lot of them? Uh, I don't sell real estate. Oh, you don't sell real Okay, <laughs> all right. Coach. Well, I teach and coach agents to call expired listings though. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about expired listings and for sale by owners and basically anything mm -hmm. that's in that side of the market, because quite frankly, mm -hmm. I think that's the lowest hanging fruit in the marketplace right mm -hmm. now, because mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about, you know, what kind of market we're in four or five, six months ago. Yeah. For sale by owners, they were able to, you know, get it done. They didn't need, they, they didn't need us. Like back then the conversation was like, you know, I, I mean, I'll be honest, like I prefer this market because it's easier. I mean, you know, I, I don't have to do as much hard selling. They realized like, man, this market's impossible. Like, can you please take this off my shoulders and take this off my plate? Like, I can't, I, I don't want to deal with getting my house sold. Like you take care of it. So, you know, as, as far as like expired listing, let's talk about, you know, expired listings and what, what those calls sound like. So, you know, I'll, I'll just use the example of, of uh, and, I, and, and I, didn't, I, I don't know why, I, maybe I subconsciously picked the, the name John in my example because I saw John in your name. I don't know. That was sort of, I just noticed that your name is John. Um, so so we'll, we'll say, let's, call, let's say Ashley is the homeowner. So, uh, you know, we get Ashley on the phone, like ring, ring. Hello? Uh, hi, is this Ashley? So let's let's talk about like my scripting there. And I'm not saying this is the be all end all. I've heard all sorts of different scripting. I know Ricky Kruth has his thing. Uh, I've seen Brandon Mulrennan. He's got his thing. Like everybody's got different scripting. I'm not, I'm not here to have a debate about which scripting is the best. What I have found, and I'll give you the reasoning why I prefer, you know, the, the way that I go with this. So every time I get somebody on the phone, it's the exact same thing. Hi, is this first name. Hi, is this Ashley? Hi, is this Carrie? Hi, is this John? Why do you guys think that I go back to the well on that every time? Anybody got any ideas there? It gets them to say yes. That's and I mean, the more that they start saying yes, there's a psychology around that. There, there's a little bit of psychology in there. So, so it's, it's getting them to say yes. It's getting them to confirm that I have the right person on the phone guys, if, if somebody's asking like, who is this? Mm -hmm. um, there's a level of curiosity built in there though. Would you guys agree with that? So like the, the human mind is an interesting thing, right? So if, if you get a call, let's talk about the, the psychology of I'm getting a call from somebody. I don't know who it is. Unknown number. I don't know who it is. What's your, what are you thinking 
initially, what's the homeowner thinking when they get that call? What are they thinking? Who is this? It's sort of, but I mean, how, how many call, how many calls are you getting from people, you know, selling auto insurance for the car that you didn't own, uh, you got rid of three years ago, health insurance for real estate agents. I swear I get like four <laughs> of these text messages a day. Yeah. Solicitor. Yeah. Christy says solicitor. Um, so, so in, in immediately you're already on the back foot when you're making these calls mm -hmm. already. So by asking, hi, is this John, hi, is this Ashley? Hi, is this Carrie? I'm, fli I'm flipping the script. I'm, I'm, instead of them, this person getting ready to hang up on me, I'm flipping the script and, I'm, and now they're curious who it is. Who is this? Yeah, yes, this is Andy. Who is this? And, and that gives me the runway that I need to get to the point of my call so I don't get hung up on. Making sense? So like if, if you're making calls, the most annoying thing in the world is to get hung up on. Now I've been doing this for a while. I don't get hung up on very often. And when I do get hung up on, I get, I get, you know, I get a little pissed. Like it's, it's not pleasant, right? Let's be real. Nobody likes to get hung up on. So that's why I do that. And I promise you, if you try it, you'll find that your, your calls just, they flow. It's like, it's not like you're, you're trouncing in mud. It's like, water moving downhill yeah angie's saying I, I call back and say i think we got disconnected i do the exact same thing by the way that's hilarious yeah exact same thing so and then and then i get into immediately hi this is andy with the xp realty here in austin hey i was calling about your house at 123 main street is this property still available quickly just get to the point like you know and, and i i know a, a lot of people ask you know Hey, how are you doing? <clears throat> you know, things like that. I personally never ask anybody how they're doing. And the reason why is because they don't know who I am. And that gives up the control of the call that I have. So like when I'm asking the question, hi, is this John? The person that's receiving that call, they think they're in control of that conversation because I'm asking them a question. But the reality is I'm in control of that call because I'm the one asking the questions. So when I'm asking the questions, I'm in control and I, I get to lead the call the direction that I want to go. Making sense? Yeah. So that gives me to the next part of the call. You know, is this house still, is this property still available? Uh, you know, we took it off the market. I don't think we're going to sell it anymore. Okay, got it. I mean, you know, do you have any listings, any, or do you have any uh, showings, any offers? Uh, not really. Any lowball offers? No, not really. Okay, got it. I mean, do you mind if I ask what had you thinking of putting the property on the market initially? You guys see that I'm going straight back to the example that we had, you know, on the whiteboard session. I'm, I'm finding out the why. Guys, if you don't have the why, you're, you're, you're floating around in the ocean without a paddle or a sail. You can't do anything. But if, if I know the why, let's, let's talk about a couple different examples. Let's say this guy says, uh, it's, it's our, you know, it's, it's just a vacation house. We we're thinking about selling it. The market's just not great right now. We couldn't get where, what we were looking for for it. We still visit there from time to time. We're just taking it off the market. Where are we at motivation level on a scale of 10 with those people? Anybody, anybody got something? Probably, probably like a two or a three, right? Like they, they don't need to sell. Two or three. But if I ask that same question and, the, and these people tell me, well, you know, grandma is 80 years old. She's living by herself right now. We were thinking about downsizing. So or we were thinking about upsizing so we could get into a bigger house, uh, but we couldn't get what we were looking for. And grandma's, grandma, uh, grandma's house is still, it's still on the market. You, you guys see where I'm going with this. So now like family's in the picture and, it, you know, motivation level now you know, we're, we're, talk, we're not talking about our two or three anymore. We're talking about like a seven, eight, potentially a nine if the stars align. You guys, you guys see where I'm going with this? So when, mm -hmm. when, when people are saying, you know, you know on, on these calls and they're, they're trying to hard sell these people about, well, hey, you should use me because, you know, I've sold like 100 homes last year and I've got like 50 million five-star Google reviews. Guys, nobody cares about any of that stuff. Cause you're not like, you're not helping. You're just talking about yourself. Right. And the reality is like sales, sales is about giving people what they want. 
All they care about is what's in it for them. And if all you can talk about is yourself, you're not listening to what they have to say. And honestly, like the person that's, that's on the receiving end of that, they're just thinking like, wow, this person's an asshole. <laughs> like so full of themselves. Is this, is this making sense? Yeah. So, so, you know, and then when you find out the why guys don't, don't even hesitate in the slightest. What's the stat that Zillow gave us 80% of the agents that get face-to-face -face first win the, win the business, ask them what, okay. I totally understand where you're coming from. Listen, I'd love to come by and take a look at your property is there any chance that I can maybe swing by? We could see if we can help you get to that $500,000 number you're looking for. You got some time today? You got, you guys see, like, feel how, how easy that flows. Instead of saying like, well, we, you know, I sold a hundred homes last year and we were the top ranked team in, you know, in, in wherever, who cares? Like, and, and the amount of, the amount of times that I hear this on calls and I'm not calling anybody out, but I'm saying just like, stop it. Set yourself up for success and talk about the stuff that they care about. And then, you know, the, the reality is like, you know, we talked about, you know, what does a buyer want? Buyer wants their dream house. I think I said that. So sometimes these training calls tend to blur together sometimes, but buyers want their dream house. Sellers, all they care about is selling their property quickly for top dollar with as little stress as possible. Speak to those desires. And that is how you get the listing. And that's, and that's like, so when we're talking about like, what, what's the low hanging fruit in the marketplace, man, for sale by owners, it's the exact same thing, slightly different conversation, but you know, it's the exact same thing. Speak to those desires. And that like, that's, that in my opinion is the lower, lowest hanging fruit in the marketplace right now. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and huh. one, one last thing before I forget this, when, when, and now I just, and now I just forgot it. I'm sorry, I interrupted <laughs> it's you. okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> What, what were you going to say? I hope I hope well, I, I was just going to ask. I'm curious how many people are actually making it a part of their plan this year for expireds and for sale by owners, because John also agreed. You've said this, that could be, and probably is low hanging fruit. If you're willing to make these calls of people, you don't know, those would be two, two to start with, right? You guys, you both shook your head. Yes on that. So even if you've never done it before and you're looking at, I need to double down and do some different things in my business in the new year to achieve my goals, this could be it. How many of you have thought of that or are starting to do it just out of curiosity? I am just because of Becky like, the other day when she said how easy it was. So now it's awesome. a consistent message. Oh, cool. So you're just starting. Nice. And it, it, it should be easy. Like if it, like that, that mentality, like it should be easy. If it, if it feels hard, you're doing something wrong. But if, if it feels easy, I mean, you know, coming back to what I was saying about like, you know, the, the, where's the job security, like whether we go into a recession or not, doesn't matter. Like if, if you're focused on, if you're in the problem solving game, guys, like you're never going to go hungry ever. If you're, if you're constantly focused on speaking to the, to the needs and desires of the person, the people that you, you serve. So we're in real estate, buyers want the dream house, sellers want to sell quickly for top dollar with as little stress as possible. Investors, all they care about is, anybody money. got it? Money. Making money, sure. money, 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 money. All they care about is making money. Mm -hmm. So if you can speak to those desires, the game that we're talking about, you know, where 90% of those people are no, like the, the money is in the no. And when you, when you truly understand that, I mean, you, you can make as much money as you want. There's no cap. There's no cap. Like you're like, and coming back to the point where I was, where I was saying about like, you know, well, I started asking myself the question, like, how can I lose the game? Like, is there any way that I can lose the game? I mean, it, it, I mean, real question here, does anybody see any, any holes there? Like, is there any, conceivable situation if you play that game that way is there any way that we can lose the game anybody got stop. anything stop playing and that's that's the only way if you quit then you lose the game or if you never start <laughs> you weren't in it to begin with that that's yeah. you so so you got to get in the game and you can't quit so just don't quit and and show up every day and do the work and i mean this like sales is amazing if you can't tell I love this game. I love this space. And so like, but, but it's, it's only, it's only 
there have been two times in my life where I was dead broke, like broke, super broke. And so both of those times, you know, I still got PTSD from both of those times, by the way. Uh, yeah. you, you know, it's, it's only after you visit like the, the depths uh, in the, you know, the dark, deep hole of what it's like when you can't, when you don't have anybody, nobody's listening to you, you can't sell anything, you got nothing in your pipeline. Yeah, been there twice. And it's like brutal, really brutal. So when I'm telling you, when I'm giving you the math and showing you the real numbers game, it's not because like, I just like pulled this, you know, out of the sky. This is real life and it works because I know it works because this is what I live my life by now. And I'm not, I'm not ever going broke ever again because I'm done doing that. Had enough of that. I'm done doing that. So you know what you need to do. And the motivation is to never get back there. You just get up and you do this every day. But the inspiring part is you can't lose the game unless you quit. You literally can't lose the game. If you're doing this, you will win to some degree. You will fill your pipeline and you will get transactions. Yes, the percentages are a little bit different because of your experience and who you're calling. But if you continue to play the game, you also get better. So it gets easier and your conversion rates go up, right? I mean, that's the beauty of this. And so that's the inspiring part. Now, really quickly, if somebody wants to bring on an ISA, that is something that you have oper- you have experience in as well. I've had a- people say to me, I already do call. I want to double my efforts here because I know how to do it and I'm committed to it, but I'd like to bring somebody alongside me so that I can almost replicate myself a little bit here and, and grow my business. Um, that's something that you can also help with, right, Andy? So I want to make sure we get your stuff in the chat. Would you mind chatting just your contact information and just really quickly the last minute here telling us a little bit about the training? Now, an agent could also attend your training, but also, um, of course, their ISA, right? To my understanding. That, that's that's exactly right. So I'm going to drop, I'm just going to drop my Facebook, uh, Facebook profile Group. in the chat. Okay. So if, if you want to chat with me about any of this stuff, this is all I do all day long. I'm happy to chat with you. And like I said, like truthfully, you know, I, I hate even talking about my services. Like if, if, if somebody wants to, to learn about it, reach out to me. I'm happy to talk with you about it. Um, yes, we do ISAs. Uh, we do a lot of agent coaching and training. Um, we also do lead generation. So, I mean, we're, we've got our hands in everything. We also do agent recruitment. We actually just started getting into the agent recruitment space because it's basically the exact same thing as booking buyer and seller appointments yeah. just for agents, right? So if you, if you have any questions, if you're having issues, especially, like, especially if you're having problems, like, please reach out to me. Let me help you in some format. I'm not going to try to hard sell you on anything. The typical client that we work with, just to give you a sense for, you know, who our typical client is, generally they've got, you know, give or take between 10,000 leads in their database. They're doing anywhere from between <laughs> 250 to 500 fresh leads per month. In most cases, these are brokers and team owners. In most cases, we got we got a handful of, of agents that are are working with us, you know, solo agent or uh, they've got two or three agents on the team and and they're just looking to you know to free up a little bit more time in their day. Um, <clears throat> what I would say is, if you are considering adding an ISA onto your team, guys, you have to know how to prospect first. Mm-hmm. You cannot bring an ISA onto your team unless you know how to do this first. Just don't even try. So uh, until you have done this for a period of time and you know in your head that when you sign on and you log into your CRM, that you're going to, you're going to find your business. Cause that's just how, that's just how it is. Like w- when you've got that mindset, then you can go hire an ISA. If you don't have that mindset, like you can't log into your CRM, make calls and dig up business out of your database. Don't hire an ISA. Cause that's not going to fix your problem. Yeah. Cool. I think that, that's a really good way to end this because a lot of people don't want to do it. And then they think they can just hire somebody else to it do it. It doesn't if work. If it was that easy, you guys, we'd all be doing that, right? <laughs> that's not the reality. Awesome. Well, Andy, I um, I really appreciate you. I, As I've always said, I'd love to just bring different people, different energies, different experiences and different companies to um, the forefront for our partners, because I just believe knowing more people in this industry that like to help each other and have skill sets is always a win for everybody. Um, and I just like you as a human being. I think you're a really cool guy. Um, and I appreciate you spending time with us. So thank you. I am sure that you will get some people to reply to you. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and put it in our live stream as well. I'll send you the copy of the recording. You guys, this will be out on my YouTube channel within about 24 hours. If you want to share it with somebody else that couldn't attend, that is not with EXP because of course we want to get out there and just share good stuff with anybody that we uh, know, like, and trust. It doesn't matter what company they're with. So 
Thanks for being part of it, Andy. Let's stay connected and do some things together. John, as always, thanks for your contribution. This is what you do all day, every day, and I appreciate you being here. And thanks, you guys, for uh, joining as always. We'll see you tomorrow because John, who's on the call, is going to be uh, coaching us tomorrow. And so you guys do not want to miss it. This week is all about lead generation, knowing your numbers, being inspired and motivated to show up and play the game. And Andy set the stage. John's going to finish it off tomorrow. So I hope I see you guys there. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Appreciate it. Did a great job.